heart to heart, soul to soul. Let's speak our minds and make it plain. I'm here for you, you're here for me. Together we stand. It's heart to heart. Welcome to Hat to Hat Chat Show. This is a talk show that brings honest discussions about various topics such as social issues, relationships, and spiritually uplifting conversations, amongst other things. My name is Adwa Arma, and today I have an amazing young man who has personally been an inspiration to me. Now, this young man is young, but has a very big personality. Today, I want to know a bit more about him and his journey in life so far. Now, the two things that I love about this man is one, his humility, and then two, the way he ministers. Every time that this man picks up the microphone, you can tell that every note and every word that comes out of his mouth is coming from deep within his soul. Now, here with me is none other but Minister Emmanuel Smith. <laughs> Emmanuel, welcome to um, Hat to Hat. Thank you for having me at Hat to Hat, and honestly, I'm humbled to be here. Amazing. It's such a pleasure to have you. Yeah. And thank you once again. Emmanuel, I want to know about your journey. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, right from when you were young till now. Yeah. But first of all, who is Emmanuel Smith? Wow. Um, <laughs> Anytime I get asked that question, I always say that Emmanuel Smith is just, um, I hope I'm still young anyway, young guy. We just, um, you are very young. You know? <laughs> yeah, um, a young guy who's just um, in love with God and just really wants to use the gift that God has given to me to be a blessing to the world, not just to the four corners of the church. Um, anywhere I am, I just want to bring love and hope um, mm -hmm. throughout what I'm doing. So Emmanuel Smith is just, you know, a young guy with, as you can see, big hair. <laughs> and, um, yeah. <laughs> so Emmanuel, when did you realize that he had this gift of yeah. singing? Wow. Um, and, uh, for me, I can clearly remember um, when I was in Ghana, I think this time I was around seven or eight. Oh, wow. And I was going to school and I remember till today I was singing, crucified. Laid behind a stone, you live to die, rejected and alone. And in time I got to that part of the song, as a young boy, I was crying. Oh, wow. Um, and for, from such a young age, I always knew that I wanted to be in ministry. I don't know how people would ask me, what do you want to be in future? I said, I wanted to be a prophet. Um, That's amazing. I, yeah, I always wanted to see the angels and <laughs> prophesy to people and everything. So music was, for me, it was just like a hobby. I just liked to sing. Um, but when I really saw that this was one of the paths that God wanted me to go to mm -hmm. was um, my mom. Um, you know, when I came to the UK, she was going from one church to the other. I'm sorry to embarrass you, mom. Um, and then, you know, because I was young, she would take me with her. And then there was one church that she was going to go to at that time um, called Gilga. Mm -hmm. And it was in Southland in Kennington area. Right. And I remember she was like, oh, come, I've found this new church. I said, mom, I'm not coming, man. <laughs> So um, one time how she actually got me there was um, she's like, listen, I have to go to work tonight. Uh -huh. So since you're not home, I'm going to take your sister with me. My sister was like around seven or eight at, as, as around okay. that time as well. She said, I'm going to take your sister with me. So when you finish what you're doing, come for her and then I can go to work. Right. So I said, all right, perfect. I mean, <laughs> no problem. So I went. And when I went, you know, the church was packed, things were going, you know, pastor was preaching and everything. So I don't know about you, but the last thing you want to do is get up and walk out of a church. You know, yeah. the pastor may be like, hey, you. Can you <laughs> yeah, so I was waiting for the perfect opportunity to get to up do and walk that. away. And um, so the perfect opportunity came when the pastor was like, Apostle de Graz, he was like, um, I asked you guys to bring your anointing oils. Where's your oil? So everyone got up. I said, ah, <laughs> my moment has come. So I literally ran out with my sister and those times I lived in Peckham and what um, some of my friends, you know, I fell into a bad crowd. So mm -hmm. what my friends would do is that if they find any phone on the floor, they steal a phone, we just take the SIM card out, go sell it. Okay. So as we walk out, my sister's like, what's that on the floor? And we looked on the floor and there was a phone on the floor. Right. Now, as my first reaction would be, yep, take the SIM Thank card you. out, <laughs> go sell it. But for some reason, something was like, don't do that. Wow. So I sat on the bus and then the phone started to ring. It was no other person's phone. 
than the apostles phone. Are you serious? Honest to God, like, <laughs> God literally set me up. Like, and literally, um, it's because his, his secretary, his PA, was run out to go and buy, and there was a shop to buy oil, anointing oil from the shop, it's and she dropped the phone. Oh. So that's how, long story short, I went back to the church, because he asked me to obviously bring his phone, yeah. <laughs> I went back to the church. <laughs> and um, I wanted to learn how to play the piano, so doing praise and worship, I would stand next to the guy playing the piano, mm -hmm. just watching and singing along whilst they were doing it. One time the praise and worship team were late, Friday yeah. service, I still remember till today, in um, 2008. Wow. And um, so they were looking for someone to do it. And the guy who played the piano was like, yeah, let this boy do it. I was around 18 that time. I was like, wow. nah, man. But they were like, he's like, no, no, you can do it. Because every time I stood next to him, he heard he me singing. singing and he could so hear you. they gave me the microphone and I just began to sing, do praise and worship. Like that was my first proper. Oh, and um, wow. after that, like the people were dancing, worship time to worship. So I was like, oh wow, <laughs> this, is, this is actually. And from then on, anytime the praise and worship team were there, they would still allow me to do it. So that's how for me, I really discovered um, the praise and worship gift, you know, mm -hmm. how to sing in front of people more, like mostly. And um, yeah, that's how the journey really began for me. That's amazing. Yeah, Great yeah. story. So what was your childhood like? What was it like growing up? Yeah. Um, for what I can remember, I've always been the, in Ghana, we call it Krifi. Yes. Yeah, the <laughs> SU, the prayer. I just want to pray, you know, and I just had a deep hunger for studying the word. My mom used wow. to tell me when I was young, um, I would, like, she would, go to morning devotion at like around 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. When I, I'm supposed to be sleeping, as she's walking to the place, she can feel someone's following her. Anytime she looks back, she can't see no one. Oh, wow. By the time she gets to the house of where they have the morning devotion, she walks in and I walk in as well <laughs> as a little boy. Um, so from what I remember, I've always um, wanted to be in ministry. I've always wanted to sit with the pastors, ask them questions and everything. But um, football was one of my passions when I was young, oh, okay. um, which is, I think, most guys are yeah, passionate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for, I think childhood, yeah, I just was, I was a quiet, a quiet child, you know, so I just okay. didn't want to mess up and all that trouble. kind of, yeah, yeah, they were trouble <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, yeah. And um, normally, I, apart from singing, I think yeah. sometimes I look at some of your videos and clips and I hear you talking yeah, and yeah, speaking. Yeah. Are you a motivational speaker as well? Yeah, yeah, I actually am. Um, I, I work for a company um, which, um, how I even ended up working for them was crazy. Um, I just went to their boot camp because my, huh? I just left retail. I was working in uh, Max and Spencer. Okay. And I just went there for their six weeks boot camp. They had oh, six before, weeks? Yeah. So before oh, you wow. start, you have an interview with the guy who owns the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And when we had the interview, he just heard me speak and asked me what I wanted to do. And he's like, there's something about you. I like you. So mm. by the end of the six weeks, he was like, I want to employ you to work for me. So even though I went to benefit from the boot camp, from training mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff, I then became, I didn't have to fill no application form, nothing like that. So the speaking thing, like I said, when I was young, I wanted to be a prophet. I wanted to be a pastor. Yeah. So the speaking thing has always been there. So um, yeah, so now I'm, I'm actually a motivational speaker as well. Amazing. I think that is a brilliant thing though, because yeah. a lot of youth, and especially you, yeah, yeah. obviously people now see you and they know you and they yeah. aspire to be like you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really brilliant thing yeah, yeah. for you to be doing that. Yeah, so yeah. they don't just see you singing, but they see another side of you, yeah, some in-depth yeah. um, you know, yeah. side of you yeah. that you give out to yeah. them. Yeah. I think it's an amazing thing. <laughs> well you, done. Thank you, thank you, thank <laughs> you. Great, great stuff. Now I realize that you have re I mean, released a, um, a single recently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. Wow. So yeah, this the, the, the single I just released recently is called Mighty God. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remember the song, you know, I used to hear people come out with songs and all of that. And I was like, I wasn't good at writing a song. Yeah. So how most of the time I would get a song is when I'm actually leading people in worship or in my private time of worship, it would just drop in my wow. spirit. So I remember this clearly. I went to a youth event at that time. It was called Youth Revival in Campbell, South London. Mm -hmm. And we were just singing and the youth, like the 
presence of God was so strong and some of them were lying on the altar. I still have wow. that video to today. And all of a sudden, the song just started coming out just, just like, that. like that. Literally, I started singing, What a mighty God you are. You never let me down. You never let me down. I love you. And like... I love that song. <laughs> it is so beautiful. <laughs> Literally. And, and, and by the time I sang it like three times, everyone in the room, you can imagine the youth crying and, and singing And were they it. singing as yeah, well? Yeah, singing in the whole room. I still have that video. So that's the day I actually... Can you sing that bit again? Yeah. That what just touched me. God, <laughs> you are. You never let me down. You never let me down. I love you, yes. What a mighty God you are. You never let me down. You never let me down. I love you. Woo! I love the harmony. I love that. You see, you see, we, you know, our duet is coming soon. I know. I think we should do something soon. That is cool. so amazing. Yeah, and yeah. so, how many songs have you released so far? So currently, I believe I have about five. Um, I have others that are, you know, gonna come very soon. So I have coming up, which was my first one. Um, we're not gonna wait for you to come down. Coming up to where you are. Oh na na na. Oh na na na. Oh na na. Coming up to where you are. Oh na na. Oh na na. Oh na na. Coming up to where you are. Lord, I'm desperate and I need you in my life, so I'm coming up to where you are. Things are not going the way I want them, so I'm coming up to where you are. God, I need your touch, I need your hand. Coming up to where you are. God, I need your touch, I need your hand. Coming up to where you are. Oh, we don't got to wait for you to come down. Coming up to where you are. We know to come down to you. Coming up to where you are. We not gonna wait for you to come to where Coming up to where you are. We not gonna wait for you to come to where So I have that. I have um, a song called Weather. That was um, using just the weather to talk about sometimes where it may be rainy season and maybe oh. so that's that i didn't really promote it that much so people don't really yeah, know about that yeah because i haven't heard <laughs> yeah. of that one yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's um a sorry there which was so a sorry there and then there's a song called you are which i released when i came back from ghana around march oh, okay. um and that one too is um you are good so good you are kind so kind when i look around the world i see the beauty of your grace oh lord oh, wow. i hear the voices of the angels yeah. as they're crying out in unity yes because you are good so good you are good lord, Good Honestly, and as someone was asking me, so how did that song come about? Yeah. And it was in a time where I realized that I was so focused on the things that were going wrong in my life and not looking at the things that God had already done. Yeah. Um, that's why the Bible the scripture says that count your blessings and name them one by one. And it will surprise you to see how good the Lord has been. Sometimes we need to pause in our lives mm -hmm. and begin to look at the things that he's done. You know, you check his track record yeah. over your life and you know, it shows you that if he's done it before, he can do it again. Mm -hmm. And that's what that song was for a while. I was just like, okay, God, you know what? I may not have the money that I wanna have now. Yeah. I may not have the house that I 
what I have now or even the car that I want but you've been so good to me mm -hmm. in the past like I remember when I was sleeping on one bed with my mom and my sister and now I'm in a place where the same country that I came in and you know I didn't even have my papers yeah. I've been able to stand on that na same country's national TV and sing and, and then go to the O2 where people said it's not possible so for me that song was just really me just pausing and saying that God honestly you're good and then mm -hmm. obviously mighty God um, just said you know looking at the past you never let me down indeed he yeah. is the faithful god yeah. amazing so talking about you know standing on national tv yeah, yeah. you know i mean emmanuel that time i, I knew you weren't yeah, that yeah. close but um there was just something about it the pride knowing yeah. that i know this guy <laughs> and he's in TV. And, you know, yeah. it was i think everyone that knew you yeah felt yeah you know a sense of joy and a yeah. sense of pride yeah. to yeah. see you be I mean, yeah. go on there yeah. and to see you do so well yeah. so what yeah. inspired you to go on the voice wow um i believe like for most singers like you, you, that's the kind of stages <laughs> you want to go on so yes i've watched you on youtube i've watched you on tv and i'm like wow one day i want to go on this show um so in 2015 mm -hmm. um i applied to go on the s factor and okay. the voice and you know went to queue outside for hours wow. to go and sing you know that time i didn't know much about it so i thought that you actually queue outside and you go and sing in front of the proper judges but you actually sing in front of some producers behind oh, okay. the scenes so queued went got to my turn i sang the x factor people were like no you're not going for us like, oh wow the voice was next week i went they two said no 2015 i said wow so 2017 comes I said I'm gonna try again. That is amazing. Yeah. Because someone would just be, you That's know, it. yeah, yeah. It would yeah. just knock yeah. them back, and they'd be like, okay, I've done it once. It didn't happen. I'm not doing it again. Nah, I was, cause I don't know. There was just something in me that just felt that I was, I'm meant to be on, one, you know, that yeah. stage. For me, I what it's like S Factor is what I wanted, cause that time it was big and everything. <laughs> yes. So I remember I went for the S Factor again, and um, this time they said yes at the first one oh, wow. went to the second one they said yes went to the third one yes and then went to the final one where the judges were there um, Simon was there Nicole Scherzinger all of these people were there I was being filmed I was there from 9 a.m. they were filming me everyone was like wow you are definitely gonna go for I me mean, you got your guitar you're singing all of this kind of stuff long story short by 9 p.m. which is like 12 hours later they said um, <laughs> sorry there's not enough time to see um, the judges and literally no. that was it after weeks of all these or this that was it um, and no. I had I had the voice neck the following weekend as well went for that as well they said no so it's like in 26 so, I so just that got, was like the second time yeah so wow. that time I said you know what enough is enough but <laughs> maybe it's just me that wanted it because I mean with the X-Factor to get as far as I did to finally get to the day of the judges and not get through that was yeah. just so disheartening so I was like you know forget this but I, I prayed one prayer and I said God I'm not going to chase them if it's your, it's your will for me to be on that show let them chase me yeah. fast forward a, a, a year later I get an email from The Voice and The X-Factor and so you didn't even apply that no, year? No. Amazing. Yeah, and they wanted me to come and audition at their producer's thing. So I remember my pastor's well, Pastor Joseph Amy, he, he's always said, I see you more on the voice. But as a young guy, I'm like, no, 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 I want X Factor. Yeah. <laughs> so I went for the X Factor one, auditioned. They loved it. They were like, wow, this is amazing. So mm -hmm. I was very happy. I was like, yeah, I'm going to. And I went for the voice one. The voice one I sang, you know, I was like, yeah, I didn't really <laughs> the X Factor one. I didn't hear from X Factor. So I was there when the voice messaged me that you made it to the second stage. So oh. I was like, oh, wow. So I never, obviously from my story, I've never been to that second stage. So yeah. I was like, wow. So I was still asking for a sign because I was wary of what some Christians would say, yeah. see me on a secular show. So I said, God, please, if this is really your will, give me a sign. Yeah. So I get there. There are other um, contestants there, they're singing, doing the auditions. Everyone goes into the room, does two songs, mm -hmm. even though they told us to prepare five. Now I get to, you have vocal training before you go into the room itself. I go into my vocal room and the guy there is a Christian. So we start talking about God. I'm oh, like, God, wow. this is crazy. <laughs> like, I walk into the room, go and do my audition. I sing two songs. As I'm about to walk off, they're like, oh, can you do a third song? So even me, I was like, huh? everyone did too so i did the third song 
and they said you hear back from us within two weeks. Okay. And the next day I was flying to Ghana, so a friend of mine was like, when you go, I have this prophet friend, I want you to go and sing at his church. Mm -hmm. So I don't know about you, but I've, I'm a bit... I'm about, very much about, like that as well. Yeah, yeah, about, <laughs> <laughs> I love the prophetic, but you know, you have to be careful you have about to be careful. Where, um, where you go to and everything. So <laughs> I remember I was meant to leave Ghana. I was there for 10 days. I was meant to leave the Monday. Mm -hmm. So the Sunday night was when I went to go and sing at this prophet's church. So I go there. His name is Apostle B.B. Frederick. I go into the church. I finish singing, I sit down. He's prophesying to people. I mean, you know Ghanaian prophets. <laughs> sharp, 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 sharp. <laughs> So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, now the only people that knew about my voice, the producer audition, was my mom and my sister. I didn't want to tell no one. Cause okay. I'd been rejected before and I hate having to tell people I didn't Explain get Explain yourself yeah. to them and all of that. Yeah. So only my mom and my sister knew. So then, um, this man is prophesied, prophesied. I'm like, wow, God, if this man is off you, let him prophesy to me also. Yeah. The minute I say that within 30 seconds, he turns to me and says, young man, stand up. And then he starts prophesying. Then he's like, you know, I can't see everything now. See me after church. So after mm -hmm. church, I went to go see him. And then he's like, when are you leaving Ghana? I said, oh, tomorrow night. He's like, can you come to my house in the morning? So me, I was thinking, mm -hmm. I've not been to Ghana for 15 years. <laughs> my last day, I want to enjoy the place. But hey, you say, come to my house. <laughs> So I said, no problem, God, you know, I've still been asking for a sign and then and I hadn't heard from the voice people. So okay. I said, so I went to his house, he's talking to me and then randomly he's like, young man, I see you singing and I see four judges turning around for you. No. Honest to God, I can hold the Bible and say that. Wow. And say, yeah. He says that to me and I'm sitting there like, yo, and he carries on talking like <laughs> as if he's not even <laughs> dropped a bomb like, I was like, no, 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 what, like, What literally. did he just say? So I came back, long story short, came back. Three days later, I had a, um, a call from The Voice, and it was like, um, you've made it to the TV auditions. Oh. And that's when I was like, wow. Thank God, you're like, thank and you, Lord. As we know, I stood on that stage, and what he said, all four of them turned around for me um, after I finished singing, and I was just standing there that day like, is this really happening? Is this yeah. really me and everything? So yeah, it was it, it was like God was just showing me signs, and you know that's where spirituality comes in, where yeah. he, he directed the Bible says that the steps of the righteous man are ordered by the Lord. I'm not righteous yeah. in my own works, for the Bible says that even our righteousness is filthy rags before Him, but I'm righteous because Christ lives in me. Yeah. So therefore, that means that He you know He leads my steps and He guided me through every step of the way so being on there and seeing people like yourself that you know saw me before yeah. and everything just you know bring that at least excitement that we have one of our people on exactly there. yeah exactly because yeah. the very first time that i encountered your ministry yeah um you know that day and we hadn't spoken prior to that yeah, yeah, yeah. was way back when minister Cheko used oh, wow. to do halal worship yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and then it was that west Norway. yes <laughs> and you sang and i'm thinking this guy is going far you know i i just knew it wow. and then slowly but surely we i came to know yeah, you we yeah, started talking yeah, and everything yeah. and then the voice came up and i'm like that's my little brother on there <laughs> and then you know when you stood on that stage yeah and you belted that song out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what was going through your head? Because I think you sang with everything inside of yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so for me, I don't I don't sing a song until like I really mean it or I live it. So for me, it's like, especially the part that you're saying that it's like I sang with every fiber of my being. It's, it's where it says, um, it's not a cry you hear at night is a cold and a broken hallelujah. It was when I just remembered every tough season that I've wow. gone through, where it's like, we know that hallelujah means praise be to God, mm -hmm. but there have been some hallelujahs that we have said, but it didn't come from a place of, oh, hallelujah. It came from a place of tears, like you were broken. So yes. it's like when it got to that point, it's like the thoughts of everything I'd gone through, my mom had gone through for me to be where I am. Everything just came in and I just was like, listen, God, this is a, a, a cold and a broken hallelujah mm. and i just i don't know what happened like the holy spirit just took over and i just belted it out and um, I, so I didn't even holy care spirit about sounding good over i yeah. mean when um jennifer hudson turned <laughs> and then the others followed i'm like whoa <laughs> and we were watching it on tv yeah. but we could feel what you were feeling yeah. 
Yeah. And I yeah. thought it was yeah. brilliant. Yeah. What was it like working with Will I Am? Um, honestly, like Will I Am is such an awesome guy. Like he's so cool. Like, I remember when the first time I saw him was obviously when Black Eyed Peas did the Where Is the Love, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, there's something like even though all of them are amazing, there's something about this man. Okay. So when to finally go on that um, platform and you know choosing him because everyone thought I would pick Jennifer Hudson, which is yeah. you know amazing, <laughs> um, but I felt led to pick Will. Um, and honestly, he's such a cool guy. He knows his music, and he was so encouraging um, to me. So it's like, this is the guy I used to watch on TV. Now I'm standing here with him. And one thing I love about him is that when it got to the knockouts, where mm -hmm. people saw me sing gospel, he actually said to us, his contestants, that I want you guys to do whatever songs you want to do, uh -huh. not songs that I want you to do. Okay. So he was the, from what I know, he was the only um, coach that allowed his people to do what we actually were happy to do. And it was just God, like literally just using them. And one of the things I love is that after I finished singing, and I remember it was the knockouts and he was gonna put someone through. And they asked him, who are you gonna put through? And I love that, you know, word he uses, like I'm gonna, the person I'm putting through is a lion named Emmanuel Smith. Oh, so for amazing. me, yeah, so for me, I was like, he gets me. Yes. And um, yeah, so it was it was great working with him. And I, I really bless God that even after the show, he still stayed in touch, you know, he still checked out my oh, stuff. Really? Yeah, he still, you know, being supportive and, you know, just watching my progress and everything. So even for my show at the O2, he was meant to come, um, but he, he, he had to do something in the States. So oh. I was like, imagine what I am showing up for. That would have thing. been yeah. brilliant. So, yeah, he's been, he's been, you know, He's been awesome to me. Yeah. Oh, we thank God. Yeah. Amazing. So talking about, uh, you know, The Voice and your journey through The Voice and all of that. Yeah. Straight after The Voice, you decided to put up this massive show <laughs> at the O2. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what made you make that crazy decision? <laughs> yeah. um, honestly, for people that know me, I'm just not you know, no offense to anyone or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just not satisfied with just organizing events in church buildings. Yeah. Because um, I believe God has called us to the world. And I've been to a few, you know, church programs and we kind of see the similar or the same people that show up. But I wanted to do something where we can reach out to the world because I feel like sometimes you, there are certain friends or work colleagues that you mm -hmm. say, oh, come to my church. They don't want to come. But I've said, oh, there's a show at the O2. They want to come. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So for me, and I felt like the O2 has been there is a monumental place. It's mm -hmm. like I've never heard like we're having a go I want Christians to also have an excuse to go to the O2. Yeah. So how it actually happened was I've always wanted to do something like that, but I received a confirmation. After I came off the voice, I went to America huh? like two weeks after. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember going and I'm meeting uh, a man of God that I'd never met before. And he's like, I see you doing a concert in Southeast London. And the people that are coming are not only Christians. I'm seeing worldly people coming. I'm seeing different people coming. Wow. And anyone that came to the O2 that day saw that there was a different crowd. There it wasn't was. just church people. It was just white people, black people, yeah. Asians, Muslims, Christians. Everyone was just there. And that's that's the thing. So for me, um, I remember some was, some was said, ah, oh, this is crazy. The first time I said I wanted to do it. Yeah. But that's the time that, um, is it uh, Mike Todd? So my told was preaching about crazy faith. <laughs> so I, re I watched that series and how he was talking. He said, something that is called faith now was called crazy before. Mm -hmm. And when, you know, now people look at the O2, they're like, wow, that was some crazy faith. Yes. It was some crazy <laughs> faith. Yeah, so, you know, like I remember my Todd was, was speaking about faith, you know, crazy faith. So something that is, you know, was crazy at the beginning is now called faith. You know, it's like Peter when he walked on the water. At first, yeah. it was crazy to the mind that he's, he can actually walk on mm -hmm. water. But when he did it, we call it faith. So I believe in this life, like, we have to take some decisions. Before, like, even me, when I first <laughs> said I'm going to do the O2 and I called them, my friends called them and we asked the price. I was like, chai. <laughs> Just for the venue. That was what I was going to ask you. Why were, you. were you not scared about the cost? And now yeah. you're going to meet it. Do you know, honestly, I'm not even going to lie. The first time that they told me the cost, <laughs> I wasn't actually scared. There wow. was this, yeah, there was this, I don't know, this, I have this, like you said, humility, but there's also a stubborn spirit in me where Which I is believe. a good thing. 
everything is possible. Like, yeah. So when I heard the prize, and you know, I'm not shy to quote it, sixteen thousand eight. Wow. For, um, for seated and fourteen thousand for standing. Now anyone would say, okay, let me go for the cheaper one. But I was like, nah, let's go for the um, seated one because yeah. I want people to feel comfortable that they shouldn't just come and stand. Exactly. And honestly, like I just felt when I heard the prize, I was like, ah, but we're Christians, we can do this. <laughs> I don't know, I, I was like, we're Christians, like, we can do this. But it was obviously f during the journey <laughs> where people were not buying tickets. Yeah. Um, like, the money to pay, the O2 went on my case, we need this money by this time. Oh, that, wow. And people that I thought would be there for me were not picking up my calls, text was not, right. so one, I remember one of the nights that really changed everything was me. I was so down, I was ready to give up. I couldn't oh, wow. sleep. Because you wake up, you check how many tickets are gone. I'll ask my friend. He's like, oh, this week only eight tickets left. I said, um, we're bought. When, I was oh, like, no. hey. So one night I was just saying, God, this, this is enough. I can't do this. And then he reminded me, like, remember that when your mom came to the UK, she, um, before the, anyone knows the O2, what's called the O2, what's called the Millennium Dome. It was dome. the Dome, yes. And then she was like, the, the Holy Spirit was like, remember that when your mom came, she was a cleaner at the Dome. And I was like, wow, my mom was actually cleaning the bathrooms, the toilets, the floors at the same place. And that itself was just enough reason for me to say, I have no excuse. Yeah. She toiled, she travelled, she did all of this. Yes. It was my excuse that I can't do this. No, God, <laughs> let me do it. And that was just enough reason that just, I was like, you know, this is possible. And on, honestly, on the nights to see my mom a place that she used to clean. Oh, bless her. Now she was sitting at the VIP. Yeah. Watching her son. Not just doing anything that, you know, was not something she'll be proud of, but, mm -hmm. you know, lifting up the name of the God that she has raised me in. And it was just amazing. That whole night, you know, people that came saw there was a point that I, I broke down because even what made it too much, apart from the money and people not buying tickets, was a close friend of mine. Um, Richie, 28, you know, he's a designer, mm -hmm. died. Oh, I remember you yeah. putting something and up. Yes. I, that hit me so hard oh. because he was meant to be on my show. I even planned to wear one of his things on yeah. the night, which I did wear on the night. So the whole journey to it was just crazy. And I just want to encourage people that, you know, when God says he's going to do something, like Joseph, like, God told him your family will bow down to mm -hmm. you. He was excited but he didn't know the process he would have to go through for yeah. that to happen. So for me, even though the O2, you know, looked big, I had to look at it from God's view. Exactly. From my low point of view, it's like a mountain. Yeah. But his point of view is a plane. So I had to see it. I had to, you know, when Paul said, <laughs> we're seated in heavenly places. Yeah. So I had to go and sit on my seat <laughs> and look down and say, this is possible. And um, I really bless God. Obviously, during the journey, there were times I doubted. Yeah. There were times where I was fed up. But on the night, God, it you happened. know. Yeah. You had some super crazy. I thought I had a super crazy thing. <laughs> Look, I think you had a super, super crazy thing. Because doing that, you know, was a big thing. And you yeah. made history. Yeah, because yeah. even in the Und Indigo, I mean, I've, we've had circular Ghanaian, oh, yeah, yeah. circular yeah. music gone yeah, there, and yeah. they didn't fill the place. Yeah, yeah Any yeah, man was yeah. made filled <laughs> the place. I mean, I was there and I looked around and I was like, God, to you alone be the honestly, glory. Honestly, honestly. You I, know, you have done it. Mm, mm, and I was, it was, it was a pure joy, you know. Honestly. And it's such, it was just such a um, humbling experience. Honestly, for to me, see what you've done. I I came off that show, and one of the things I'm just grateful to God for is that, you know, we, we we've heard so many times that when God gives a vision, He makes provision for it. Yeah. Like one of the things I was worried about is that God, am I going to come out of this with debt? Yeah. But honestly, God paid every bill. Wow. Paid the venue. Anyone I borrowed money from, because I owe people like seven k. Wow. Paid them after the show paid the singers, paid the band, paid the light, paid the camera, wow. paid, and I can't say I did it. God so, literally did everything. Does that mean everything. the people bought the ticket at the very last minute? Oh yeah, the very last <laughs> minute. Like, imagine, <laughs> I, I know how many tickets had gone, and I knew that the place was not, at least just a bit over half, were gonna come. And I'm sitting in my dressing room and I'm like, do you know, the day's here, whatever. So my friend, Jemima, she does my PA stuff. She comes in, she's like, Emmanuel, the place is getting full. 
right, or whatever, man. She's like, no, 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 come and see, come and see. Wow. So I put on a, a jacket and I, I remember you yeah, came, upstairs. I came upstairs. <laughs> I came upstairs, yeah. So I came upstairs and I was standing there like, what? Like I was seeing so many people, people that I know, yourself, yeah. Alan Keiko, all of these ministers yeah. and men of God. And I was there like, wow. And I still can't get over it. Yeah, I, I think it's a beautiful it. thing because um, what I, I think is you brought us all together as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, You know, um, yeah. I think we're all there in unity just yeah. to support one of our own. Yeah. And I think that was very beautiful. And that's what is making me even right now emotional. Just the fact that like, who am I? That, you know, people like yourself, the men of God, the mm -hmm. women of God that came, came to just show support for a young boy who was just who dared to dream big wow, that we can take gospel to this place. Have you got any, you know, exciting things coming up in the future? Yeah, um, honestly, I, I've got a few songs coming out, so oh, definitely an album as well. Um, but one of the things that me, I like to speak things into existence, that people should not be surprised to see me at Glastonbury. Woo, um, yes. I want to ta take my sound and music, what God has put inside me there. Um, is, I want to go to the important. wireless. I want to go to the, my song will be UK charts, number one, not gospel. Amazing. One, the Brits Awards, all of these things. That's Imano Smith, because I believe that we, we need to share what we have with the world and at least give them the option of wanting to join what we're doing or not. Yes. Emmanuel, give us a little motivational speech, especially yeah. to the youth out there yeah. who have seen you, who have seen your ministry, you know, growing and blossoming, mm. you know, say something to them so that they, a lot of them have been doing this shortcut little, yeah. you know, deals here and there because they want to get up so quick. Yeah. Let them understand the process mm. and, and, you know, say something to them. Well, um, I'll use three things. Mm -hmm. Like the first thing you mentioned, process. People need to understand is that there's a process that you have to go That's through. Right. You can't bypass the process exactly. because if you get there quick, you come down quick. <laughs> but if you allow God to take you through the process, it's like an example. When I went to uni and I got student loan, because it's money that I didn't work for, yeah. I've just spent it like that. Wow. But when I was working in ASDA, and then you know how much you have to work hours to get a certain amount of yeah. money, you don't just go anywhere and just buy anything anyhow because you worked for this. That's so right. you treasure it you savor it like mm. so for me that's the process go through the process so that when you get to that place that you want to get to you don't just come crashing down like we say the gift of god will bring you before great people by your character is what's going to keep you there mm -hmm. so make sure you remain humble also fear has been one of the things that's been stopping so many th people and so many things from happening you know mm. I, I say this don't deny the world of and you know encountering someone as wonderful and as great as you are mm. because you allowed fear which we all know to be false evidence appearing real it's not even real <laughs> you know most of us have a fear of heights why <laughs> having a fear of heights some people cannot travel on the plane there are yeah. so many different countries that you can go and see beautiful things and the last thing is um the opinions of people people allow that to oh people will say this and people will say that and people will say this Please, when you get before the throne room of God and he, you're standing before him, you've got no excuse because yeah. he knew that those people will still exist, but he still trusted you to do what he called you to do. Exactly. So don't allow people's opinions because when God was forming and creating you, he didn't ask for no one's opinion before he formed you. The only people's opinion he asked for is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He said, let us create man. So he created you knowing that um, you have everything that it takes to make it so please fear go through the process mm -hmm. do not fear and do not fear the opinions of people people will always talk when you do good True. they'll talk when you do bad they'll talk that is amazing that is a powerful one and yes indeed the opinion of people i think that is a bigger one because yeah, yeah. people tend to think about what this one is going to say or what that one is going to say yeah, you yeah. know so do not let people hold you back when god called you he mm. called you alone yes they were not there when he was no, speaking to no. you so you <laughs> it wasn't know. a conference call <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> You know, yeah. Imano, it's been amazing having ah, you right you. here. Thank, thank you, you so much. Where can people reach you? Yeah, I'm on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube. It's all Imano Smith, E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L-S-M-I-T-H. 
on Facebook, you add this Emmanuel Smith, but you add Tally, T A L I, and you cannot miss the Afro and the Beats. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Thank you once again for um, you know joining us on Hats to Hats Chat Show. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, share, comment, and make sure that you spread the word so that you'll be one of the first people to also hear about you know everything that we put out there. We've got some juicy information coming out. You know, like I said, Hat to Hat is about you know, honest conversations about different things. We'll talk about relationships, we'll go deep into certain things, you know, and um, we'll talk about Christian stuff, we'll talk about social issues and all that. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell to notify you as well. Thank you so much. Bye for now. Heart to heart, soul to soul, let's become